Would you rather eat this sushi or these grasshoppers? Will insects be the new sushi? This is the University of the Netherlands. How often do you eat fried grasshoppers? Although they're healthy, nutritious, maybe you think, yuck, I don't eat insects. We asked some people on the streets of Amsterdam how they feel about eating these crawling creatures. Oh my <laughs> god. What, what, what do just you think happened? Oh uh, man, they look so unappetizing. Do I, um. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, sorry. I don't like them. They don't seem tasty. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay, thank you. No, thanks. I guess it's safe to eat. So, not much enthusiasm there. But why do many Westerners find the idea so disgusting? Lots of people happily eat escargot or caviar, which, in the end, are snails and fish eggs. So how do we come to eat certain types of novel or culturally unusual foods, but don't incorporate others into our diet? In academic research and in the popular media, insects are presented as a new sustainable alternative protein source. The argument is that eating insects can radically reduce the problems associated with meat consumption, like carbon emissions. Eating insects is widely seen as being better for the environment than eating meat, and scientists are really excited about it. All we have to do, they argue, is to encourage people and convince them it's a good idea to eat insects. However, when you go to the supermarket or eat in a restaurant, you can buy a veggie burger, order a steak or a vegetable dish, but insects aren't on the menu or common in supermarkets. What's the reason for that? Will we all eat mealworm curries one day? Before we go into why we do or don't eat insects, let's take a look at a dish that was once uncommon as well, sushi. Sushi didn't used to be popular in the West, but it rose to become a widely appreciated food over the last decades. Oh, I know sushi. Want to try one? If I can. Oh, sushi. Can I have one? Yeah, sure. sure. Oh yeah, love sushi. I love sushi. Mm. I'm very familiar with this taste. Delicious. Mm. I really like. Thank you. So there you have it, people love sushi. But if you think about it, this is quite remarkable. Many aspects of sushi, especially the ingredients, seaweed and raw fish, were for many years unfamiliar to us in the West. Maybe sushi's rise in popularity could offer a model to popularize insects as well. Sushi wasn't always as common or popular in Western countries. Outside of Japan, sushi was first popularized in the US in the 1960s, where Japanese cuisine was already quite popular. At the time, Japanese cuisine was regarded as a new, interesting and exciting thing, and sushi came along as part of this trend. In places like LA and New York, Japanese expats opened sushi bars within existing Japanese restaurants, and this introduced Americans to this new way of eating, imported from Tokyo. It wasn't just the food, it was the entire experience. The particular dishes, seating, the way you eat, all of it was recreated in these places. Even the chefs were brought from, from Japan to come and cook in the US. And in this way, sushi became a hit, particularly among the wealthy segments of society. It became a luxury. And this is a typical way for foods to spread to new places, through migration. With the spread of people, cuisine spread as well. Migrants often open up food businesses to cater for the taste of their community and to build a livelihood. But not only that, migrant groups often develop supply chains to import the stuff they cook with too. And these activities help to establish a new market for particular kinds of foods. And, once it's established, it often begins to spread through society. Others start to visit the restaurants and to include a new cuisine in their diet. This shows an important factor for introducing foods to new places. The food needs to make sense as part of a cuisine. It needs to be part of a recognizable way of cooking and eating. And it helps if a large group regards this as interesting, traditional, and maybe high status. That's certainly the case for sushi. When you think of its aspects that were unusual for Western diners, so seaweed and raw fish, they are actually a key part of an already existing way of eating. Americans didn't just decide it was okay to eat raw fish, instead it was introduced to them in a way that made sense of it as food. So how does this work for insects? 
Maybe you've seen them on TV or as part of your travels. They're often fried and sold as a snack. But insects can also be part of a meal. Across the world, over 2,000 species of insects are eaten. However, in Europe, only four main species are produced for food. Grasshoppers, crickets, mealworms, and lesser mealworms. These were chosen not for their culinary profile, but because the technology and skills needed to breed them already existed in Europe. They were used to feed zoo animals and exotic pets. And unlike in countries with a history of insect consumption, food insects in Europe are smaller and are quite expensive. There are two main ways in which insects are introduced as food in Europe, making them invisible in food or integrating them into familiar dishes. The first approach might make you think of presenting food to young children. You simply hide a particular ingredient in a food that they already know or like. And in a similar way, insects can be ground up into a nearly invisible powder. This powder is then included in things like veggie burgers or pasta. And the idea is that by doing this, you get around the yuck factor. People, if they know that insects are healthy and good for the environment, can eat them without having to face the insects themselves. Makes sense, right? Or maybe not. Because as soon as you hide the insects in a particular product, that product is judged just like any other from that category. Let's take the veggie burger as an example. There are plenty of options out there. So a veggie burger containing insects will be judged by the same criteria as others. Is it tasty? Is it convenient? And is it affordable? Maybe the first time, people are curious and will try it out. But after that, I'm going to be honest, it's an expensive and not very nice tasting veggie burger. So people won't buy it again. As soon as you, as soon as you hide a novel, unusual ingredient in a particular type of product, a general rule applies. If people are going to eat the novel version, it needs to be better than potential alternatives on criteria such as price, taste, and convenience. Let's try another approach and prepare a meal with insects. We have a recipe for pasta with mealworms, and we already have the pasta with mushrooms. Now all we need to do is add some nuts, a little cheese, and of course, some mealworms. Bon appetit! As you can see, the insects have been made part of a European dish. Do you want to try it? Many people won't. But why don't we want to eat this, but we do eat this? An insect meal is quite different from a sushi roll. The insect species you can buy in Europe are not part of an established cuisine. And that's where the crucial difference with sushi lies. The ingredients of sushi are an integral part of an appealing, distinctive, high-status cuisine, whereas in Europe, insects have been added, almost as an afterthought, to cuisine that was developed without them. Simply put, Western food insects aren't connected to an existing food culture or cuisine that can help to introduce them. And what's more, they aren't easily accessible. They're quite expensive and not available in most supermarkets. So what does this mean for efforts to introduce other novel foods? Well, if you're going to introduce a new food to new places, it needs to make sense somehow. It needs to be convincingly integrated into a cuisine of some sort, ideally one that's regarded as interesting, distinctive, and perhaps high status. It also needs to be quite easily available. Otherwise, people aren't going to eat it. Mexican cuisine could offer a way to introduce insects as part of a meal, especially in the US. In parts of Mexico, Chapulinas, a type of grasshopper, are eaten, for example, in tacos. And this means that there is a cuisine where insects are an integral part of a meal and could be introduced in this way. However, there are some problems with this approach. In general, Mexican cuisine lacks the high status of sushi that helps to win over skeptical diners. Mexican cuisine has also become popularized in the US without insects. So for many people, including insects in Mexican food now may seem like adding an unnecessary ingredient to familiar foods. So, are insects going to be the new sushi? No, I don't think that's likely at all. As we've learned, sushi became popular as an entire experience and a novel, distinctive cuisine, introducing us to previously unusual ingredients like raw fish and seaweed. In the West, insects lack a cuisine that can introduce them as an appealing food. And if you ask me, it doesn't help that they aren't cheap or particularly tasty. This doesn't mean that insects aren't a healthy or sustainable source of protein. 
But with the abundance of food options around, they aren't likely to end up on most people's plates anytime soon. For a novel food to be successful, even if it is healthy and sustainable, it needs to make sense as part of an established cuisine. And price, taste, accessibility and convenience are also really important, even if a food is new and exciting. So think about this when you next eat something new. Thanks for listening.